Hello, my name is Professor Margaret Rogers Van Coots, and I'm happy and delighted to be able to say that I have been invited to be the keynote speaker at an event called Stargate to the Cosmos that is taking place in Albuquerque, New Mexico on the 25th to the 28th of October. And if there's enough interest after my talk on crystal acupuncture and telegram therapy, where I will be de demonstrating exactly how one heals oneself with my crystal kits, then you might like to join me on the 29th of October and uh, do the one day workshop, crystal acupuncture in the morning, telegram therapy in the afternoon and get a certification to self-help your family and yourself, of course, uh, and practice working with your crystal kits. So if you're interested in that, then you need to contact Janet Lesson and um, buy your ticket for it. And then we'll know a minimum of 10 people must attend. And then we'll know about it and we'll send you more details. But more importantly, let me say now that as a keynote speaker for this event, I'm very happy to be able to give you what I have downloaded from the oneness over my entire life, the information that I have carried about the cosmos. So at Scar Stargate to the Cosmos, October the 25th to the 28th, I will be there doing lots of things. But one of the main keynote speaking venues I'm doing is the oneness. Have you ever stopped to ask yourself, what is the oneness? Perhaps you have questions, perhaps you have ideas. In the beginning, was condensed sound vibration formed by friction, formed by energy in the dark side of all things. And out of that compressed energy came an explosion that created momentum. And momentum is very important in all life sources. For we as individuals know this on earth that if we do not move our bodies, it will cease to exist. So let us now understand that God the Creator is our way of explaining that so long ago we were created in matter that we no longer understand and that the Forms that we have today are so different from anything that was originally invented in the essence of the Creator. And of course, if you want to know more about the Oneness and the Creator, I have a book called Journey into an Unknown World, The Way to Oneness Revisited. And now let us get on with the battle of existence. We have to have friction in the Oneness in order for the Oneness to continue to exist. So we slide up and down the pole between ascension and descension, up and down, up and down, often moving into separation and assimilation. And when we do that, we feed that information back to the oneness. And everything that we do individually is stored collectively in universal consciousness. The oneness houses a record of all that is. Within the oneness are archangels, cherubims, angels, seraphims, ascended masters, master spirit guides who do not incarnate. And we also have lower entities such as fairies and spirits and insects on this planet who are part of the oneness. And yes, we have earthbound lost people who have died and don't know where they are. And then we have demons, devils, dark side of the oneness, and the instinctive existence. And all of this must continually be doing battle within itself, back and forth, up and down that pole, to create new energy that we will all use in our future. The evolution of the oneness in form continues no matter how many times we may say we are in control and we are fixing something 
to a point of long-term usage. We most often find that what we think lasts falls apart. And in many ways, that is how we live here on this earth. We reincarnate many, many times. We look back at history and we say, I have an identity. I feel connected to uh, Egypt or Romans or ancient, ancient Mayan, Mayan and other things. But the truth is, you also are connected to aliens and other planets that you have incarnated on. So in this particular period in your life, you are human. But you have memories encoded within your soul vibration of you living on other planets in other times. The ancient gods that we speak of have integrated with us throughout all time. And we have, of course, been influenced by their presence and by their skills and their talents that they brought with them, which for us was apparently so beyond our understanding that we in some way adhered to them and stuck with the idea that they were gods that came from heaven. And in that process throughout the earth, we invented demigods, semi-demigods, and so forth. But all that we believe in and all that we understand throughout our history, passed down from generations to generations, is very much hearsay, fantasy, and illusion. And so we have to understand that when, in quotes, ancient gods were with us, that we were overwhelmed by the information that they left us, and that in their own way, what they left us was the most important aspect of our being, the DNA. We were interrupted, changed, altered throughout time in many different ways. Here on Earth, we have learned that we have been explorers who came to Earth. We forget that we've also been explorers who came to other planets. We are as interested in our own spiritual growth here on Earth as we have been anywhere else in the oneness. And we will always continue to be interested in the growth and the evolvement of our species on whichever planet we're on for the purpose of creating friction. And in creating friction in light and dark, we continue to support the existence of the oneness. You are never alone. Throughout your life, you will always be supported by energy from the oneness. And those people living in the oneness, we'll call them people, can be of many species who can contact you and talk with you and enlighten you with regard to some of your own history. Throughout the first spiritual age here on this planet, we spent millions of years learning just how to survive. Recently, in 2008, we embraced a new period, the second spiritual age. Some called it the shift. Well, what are we doing now? We're learning to communicate. And at this particular time, because we come out of darkness into light, we are communicating within the darkness of self. We are learning what not to do by misusing and abusing such things as the web. Given our struggles, trials and tribulations of life, we often tire, get exhausted, get depressed, kill ourselves or die of illness and disease. We return to this planet time after time we often find that we are in rejection of ourselves simply because we are not listening to the encoded soul structure coding that each of us has before we come into embodiment. This soul coding is, shall we say, tainted towards expressing ourselves in the negative 
in order to find the positive within each. Ultimately, in meditation and healing, we will reject what I call the rejection syndrome. That means we will stop fighting and resisting, but rather embrace meditation and healing in order to understand that we are fully a part of the oneness. And in understanding that, to know that our consideration of universal time is far, shall we say, um, uh, misunderstood, that's the best word, by us here on this planet. Because we think of the moon, we think of our calendars, and we think of time. In the oneness, where all things are known, time is omnipresent. It is now. So think of a cartwheel. And when you do, recognize the center is where all things exist. And that, given time, we will travel down one of the spokes in a period of history, which may be before or later than the life we've just lived. We may be living on another planet in another dimension. Whatever we do, we always return to the central hub and to the oneness that we consider to be home and to be the heart of God. I will be talking about all of this at my major talk on, I believe it's Saturday at 3 p.m. So please um, do come and hear what I have to say. I'll also be teaching a workshop on crystal acupuncture and telegram therapy. It will be an introductory one where I'll ask for a couple of volunteers where I'll show and tell just how powerful crystal healing is and we'll include a little bit of hypnosis. I'll also be doing a talk on how we are conditioned to be in negativity in the way we are programmed from the womb and in the early five years of our lives to believe everything that everyone tells us and during the rest of our life to tend to validate and um, justify in so many different ways what we believe when ultimately what we do believe is not the real us. So you might want to come to some of my talks besides my major one and do my workshops and uh, oh by the way join the panels where we talk about the NLP and NLP I get that right uh, we talk about the ancient aliens we talk about the oneness we talk about things that people are discussing so do come and uh, go to the website now stargate to the cosmos click on my name see all the things I'm doing and the times I'm doing them, then click on tickets and buy your tickets and come to the events that I'm doing. And while you're there, look at all the other wonderful speakers. Schedule your day, book more tickets, go see them talking. Make this a good weekend, a good holiday weekend where you are entertained and have lots of pleasures in discovering you are never alone. See you then.